Uptown Sean Porter. Please check out Jay Calderon Boxing Talk on YouTube. God bless you. What's up, y'all? It's Jay Calderon, Stand Clear Entertainment, and we're about to get into this week's Boxing Talk. There's a lot of fights coming up. First, on September the 9th, we have a double header on Spike TV when Premier Boxing Champions brings you the rematch between WBA middleweight secondary title holder Daniel Jacobs versus Sergio Mora. Now, this is a fight that a lot of people disagree with because they say, why is this fight happening? This is a fight that is just meaningless because Daniel Jacobs already beat this man. And it's a fight that shouldn't have taken place the first time. But we gotta admit, the first fight for the first two rounds was pretty entertaining. Both men hit the deck, and we expect this fight to be a pretty entertaining fight as well. I see Daniel Jacobs having no problem with Sergio Moore. It was a hiccup the first time around. Unfortunately, Sergio Moore could not finish the fight because he got into a leg injury. Now he's back. He hasn't fought since that fight, so he's had a long layoff. But Daniel Jacobs, after that fight, was able to knock out Peter Quillen in the first round for the biggest victory of his career. And he's on top of the middleweight division as one of the top 360 pounders in the world. Daniel Jacobs is destined to fight Galeni Golovkin. This is the fight that a lot of fight fans want to see and that the WBA organization has promised us. We're hoping that this fight will take place sometime in early 2017 because we want to see the hand speed and the boxing skills of Daniel Jacobs against a guy like Galeni Golovkin's punching power because that's a very good, interesting matchup. A matchup against Mora is just another tune-up for Daniel Jacobs. Jacobs is going to go in there. He's going to control his range with his speed and his foot movement. And he's going to be able to land those big shots and hurt Sergio Moore. I see a stoppage victory, perhaps in the middle rounds. But I don't see Sergio Moore pulling up an upset at all in this fight. Let's just hope that Daniel Jacobs finally has significant fights on the horizon like he did against Peter Quinton because those are the fights that we want to see him. We want to see him against the best. He's from Brooklyn. I root for the guy, but I don't see him beating a guy like Galeni Golovkin or a guy like Canelo Alvarez. I think basically they're going to recycle Daniel Jacobs with Peter Quillen for a rematch because that fight ended so fast. I know a lot of fight fans would like to see that rematch between those two guys. That's the fight that should have took place now instead of this Sergio Moore fight. But it is what it is. And Al Heyman plays a big part in these guys' careers and making them a lot of money and getting them opportunities. So tune in to Spike TV at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on September the 9th for that fight. And also on the undercard, we have rising lightweight undefeated star, Robert Easter Jr. going for his first world title fight. He's taking on a guy by the name of Richard Kami, which is a tough undefeated contender as well. And it's going to be a pretty interesting matchup. I believe both guys are going to give us a really good fight. But I see this kid as a future star in Robert Easter Jr. He has a lot of talent. He's very tall, lanky, with some good range. And he's able to put his punches together beautifully. He has very good punching power. And I see him pulling out the victory on September 9th and becoming the IBF lightweight champion. I would love to see him against a guy like Puerto Rican sensation Felix Vidal. That will be an excellent matchup between two undefeated rising stars. There's a lot of good talent in that division. You know you have... Lomachenko now fighting at 135 pounds in the lightweight division. So it will be an excellent matchup for this young man to fight guys like this because we will see how good he really is. Moving along, HBO has a double header on September the 10th. It's going to be a great night of boxing. First, we're going to have from London, England, early boxing around 5 to 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It's the IBF welterweight champion of the world, undefeated Kell Brook versus the unified middleweight kingpin at 160 pounds, Galeni Triple G Golovkin. This is a matchup that I was against from the very beginning. I love both of these guys. I'm a big fan of Brook and Triple G. It's a fight that I see as a bit of a mismatch because these guys should not be fighting each other. I say that Brooke has always been a very big welterweight. This guy should have been fighting at junior middleweight at 154 pounds, 
for quite some time now, but he has killed himself to get down to the 147 pound division to be a very big welterweight against his opponents. He's very strong, and I think when he comes in at 160 pounds, he's gonna be even stronger this time around. He has good, solid boxing skills. The guy has a good, decent jab, and he has hard-hitting punching power. But can he take the punch of Golovkin? We've seen them against welterweights where he's been rocked and hurt, but he's never been stopped and he's never been beaten. He's a very good welterweight, but I don't see him pulling out an upset against Galeni Golovkin. I really don't know who to root for in this fight. I just want to say may the best man win. We know that Golovkin has good fundamental skills. He has a very solid jab and he goes to the body excellent. He has great body work and his punching power is exceptional. He will knock out Kell Brook in this fight. Guarantee. I don't see this fight going the distance. Can Kell Brook do a better job than Amir Khan did against Canelo Alvarez? Amir Khan had blazing hand speed and very good footwork to give Canelo Alvarez trouble and get ahead on the scorecards in their fight before Canelo Alvarez was able to walk him down and land just one punch to end the entire fight and ruin everything that Amir Khan did up to that point. But I don't see Kell Brook with the hand speed that Amir Khan has or even the foot movement to get away from a guy like Triple G who knows how to cut off that ring. I see this as a very slow beating for Kell Brook. I don't think it's gonna be a quick knockout. I think it's gonna be a fight where Kell Brook takes a lot of punishment in this fight and then gets knocked out. It will be a stoppage for Triple G and an easy big payday in the UK where a lot of fans are expected to attend over 20,000 fans in our number one fighter in the world is coming to the UK. Who would want to get in a ring with him? Destroying everyone in his pack. He's one fighter, man. He's dangerous. He's an animal. People are running for Colombia. In steps Kel Brook. <laughs> he wants this. A guy who's stepping up two weight divisions to fight the most feared man on the planet. Such a hard ask. Two of the very best fighters in world boxing. Can Kell Brook conquer boxing's best? It's going to be a beautiful event. I wish I could be there in England with all the English fans because these are some great fans out there. It's a big opportunity. My hat's off to Kell Brook because a lot of people would not fight him in England. And that's where he makes his most money at. I mean, he's came to the United States to fight Sean Porter. It was his biggest victory of his career. I would have loved to seen him against Amir Khan, but Khan never wanted to make that fight. And Danny Garcia is not looking to fight a guy like Kell Brook. He'd rather fight somebody like an Andre Berto instead, waiting for his big fight against a guy like Keith Thurman later on in the year. I don't see Kell Brook ever returning to the welterweight division to defend his title. I know a lot of people would love to see him against Errol Spence Jr., especially after the performance that we just saw from Spence, but that's a fight that I don't think is gonna happen. I think once um, Kell Brook finishes right now with his fight with Triple G, he'll move down to the junior middleweight division where there's big opportunities for him there, and he's strong enough to deal with those junior middleweights, but I don't see him returning to the welterweight division and fighting a guy like Errol Spence Jr. That's just not a big enough money payday fight for him. It's a great fight, and I'm pretty sure a lot of people, especially Spence supporters, will see him destroying a guy like Kell Brook, but Kell Brook is someone not to sleep on. He is a very good fighter, and I expect him to put up a pretty good matchup against Triple G, but at the end, I see him getting stopped very badly in this fight. Now, the main attraction that's gonna be taking place on September 10th on HBO is gonna be the showdown in the 115 pound weight division between the flyweight champion Roman Chocolito Gonzalez moving up in weight to his fourth weight class against WBC super flyweight champion undefeated Mexican Carlos Cherusco. Now that's a very good fight. This is going to be a fight that you do not want to miss. It's going to be one of those potential fight of the year candidate fights right there because this is a matchup between two undefeated champions from two different weight classes meeting up at 115 pounds to show who is the best fighter in the world. A lot of people rank Roman Chocolatito Gonzalez as pound for pound the best fighter in the world. A lot of boxing experts put him high up there. I see him right there neck and neck with Andre Ward at the number two spot. And I tell you this right now, if Andre Ward beats Sergey Kovalev, he is definitely 
number one pound for pound best fighter in the world. But if he gets beaten by Sergei Kovalev, I do not see Kovalev moving into that number one spot. I see a guy like Chocolito who if he beats Carlos Cherusco in this fight right here, he should definitely get the crown as pound for pound the best fighter in the world because he would have moved up in weight and won a title in a fourth weight division and would have cemented his legacy as a future Hall of Famer. This guy will have joined Roberto Duran and many other great fighters to win titles in four weight divisions. He has excellent skills. Roman Gonzalez is a guy that puts on a lot of pressure. He has hard hitting punching power. He goes to the body and the head with beautiful combinations and he puts that pressure all night long with great stamina from beginning to end. But he's going up against a tough task. He's going up against a bigger man at 115 pounds that has quick hand speed and also very good foot movement with a solid jab and has quite a bit of power to him. Carlos is a dangerous opponent for Chocolatito. It's one of his toughest matches to date in his career. A lot of people do not give credit to Chocolatito because he fights in the lower weight classes. But this man has been undefeated throughout his career and he has won titles in three different weight divisions for the smaller men, he is one of the best fighters that could surpass a guy like the Mexican legend, undefeated, Ricardo Lopez, and guys like Michael Carbajal and Conchita Gonzalez, because this guy is special. When he gets into that ring, he's highly entertaining, and he puts on a fight. He fights the best. He's beating multiple world champions in the lower weight classes, and he's moving up for this big challenge against an undefeated fighter that has not only the size, but the boxing skills, the hand speed, and the punching power to cause an upset in this fight. I see this fight going 12 rounds in a very tough battle. All action. Can Caruso get away with his movement to be able to outbox Roman Gonzalez and score a split decision victory against this man? Or will Gonzalez put enough pressure on him where he will be able to wear down his man and hurt him in the later rounds for a stoppage or at least a decision in his favor? We have to wait and see. But I see this fight as a potential fight of the year candidate. It's a fight that you do not want to miss. So tune in to HBO 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time to watch this fight take place in California. It's going to be one hell of a fight for the WBC 115 pound super flyweight championship. Two undefeated world champions going head to head, toe to toe. Man, it's Mexico versus Nicaragua. It's going to be an explosive fight and you're not going to want to miss this fight because I'm telling you right now, it's going to be that great of a fight. And I'm rooting for Chocolatito to pull out the victory and make history as a four division world champion, surpassing his mentor, the great Alexis Aguayo, who also tried to move up a weight against Aaron Pryor. And we saw what happened in that great classic fight that they had between each other. It was an upset. And it could possibly go down the same way with this fight right here between Chocolatito and Caruso. This is a great matchup, and I'm very excited to watch this fight. I'd just like to thank everybody for tuning in and also following me on Instagram. Also, follow me on Twitter at J. Calderon Boxing. And also, join that Facebook boxing group page, J. Calderon Boxing Talk. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel, J. Calderon Boxing Talk. I'm J. Calderon, Stan Clear Entertainment. Keep watching and subscribe.